And then when I did the color purple on Broadway, the the revival, I almost said the remix. <laughs> when I did the revival, remix. light together hello come on because you got that inner light but we want to see that outer light too there we go hmm. hey boo so how are you good sister how are you good i may move because it looked bright when i tested it out earlier and now it looks like it's all good all right. move wherever you comfortable yeah let me get myself let me get myself in the right place before we get started and what's <laughs> up nat king Corey? i listened to that story girl like and now i press connect I felt so bad about not getting that King Corey stuff. Like, he really fixed me. He was like, oh, you sending other people stuff, but you ain't never sent my stuff five years ago. <laughs> they ready. Come on, let's you still see me? It says, still says. Uh-uh, I see you. Oh, Lord. Well, mine still says connecting, but if you can see me, I'm going to rock with it. So. Oh, I see everything. I see your cute curly ponytail. Eyebrows looking fleeky, you know? Leaked out. Do people still What's say? the trees? Hey, boo. What's up, everybody? Hi, everybody. Sorry, yes, you're right. I don't want nobody to see me jiggling and jangling the camera. No. And, Come on, jangle it. Y'all don't need all that jingle and jangling. Hey, jingle it. <laughs> so everybody, we're two different people. We are, that's what I was going to say. Now everybody <laughs> can see that we are not the same person. We are not the same person. I either, you know who I get? I get people think that um, I'm you, mm -hmm. and they also think that I'm Jocelyn Bio. Jocelyn, OK. Yeah. I, I can see Jocelyn. Yeah, I get Jocelyn, too. So. Well, here's the thing. We all cute, so I'll take it. Come on. We all cute and, and, and working. And booked. And, and that bo Okay. Okay. So we'll take it. <laughs> Who else in the house? I see J-Hood fan in the house. Yep. Oh, wow, Max. Hi, everybody. He says we're two double threads. Come on, double threads. You already did all. You kind of got to look all up in here. I see Britton Smith was up in here. Yeah. He said it's people think y'all the same person. Draco is in here. What's up, Draco? Boo boo. Let's see. Reverend Sykes up in here. Okay. <laughs> I told them to um, put your questions in as we get to, you know, as we get our chat on to put the questions in the question box. Help me remember that they're there, sister. Absolutely. This is going to be beautiful. I'm so glad that we did this. We talked about this a long time ago. Yep. And we wanted to do it because, I, and I know I can speak for you too, like, you know, I live on, I really do live in that whole don't be a star, be a galaxy life thing. And we got the light and there's no reason for us not to share it. Like, I'm always so happy to see Saquon and all the things. Bookie McBookerson is what we call her over here. Okay. So this is, ah. I, I love seeing you do the things. And um, the day that I found out, because your news actually came out before mine did about Irma. And I could not have been more excited. Excited. I called you like immediately. The joy was just so genuine and mutual. So thank you for just always sharing your light. And we're about to tell the people what's up. Yes, we got to tell the people. So what if for those people who may not know, we know a lot of people are in here who know, you know, you may know about our careers, you may have followed us before seen us work known us as actresses, singers. But we have the coincidence of both being in two different projects about who the queen of soul Aretha Franklin. And in those two different projects, we both play Irma Franklin. Hey, hey, yes. hey. So Patrice's project um, has already premiered. Uh, what, what was y'all's premiere date? It just premiered. Uh, March 21st, so just about two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. March 21st, her show premiered. It's a television series. Um, now it's Hulu. It's on Hulu now. It aired on Nat Geo, which is, you know, and now they keep it cute. That's National Geographic. But it's on uh, Hulu now. So everybody, you know, if you don't have your own account, use somebody else's. Okay. Right. Log in and get it. <laughs> you don't have to watch that series. It's eight episodes, hour long each. Get into it. And then the project that I'm in is the, uh, the feature film with MGM. And so, yeah. Everybody always asks me, they say, you, you, I didn't see, I was looking at the show, I didn't see you. Wait, was that you on the show? <laughs> was that you? I mean, are you get, do you get the same thing that I get? Like, oh, the confusion is like, 
Yeah, because that's the, the J Hook. No, because then I heard about it happened just today. Is the, the, yeah, wait, the girl, yeah. the British girl is the one. Oh, girl, oh. It'd be so confused, but I understand. I mean, like, it's happening at the same time. It's about the Queen of Soul. Everybody should want to see both of them. It's so much light involved on both projects. So, you know, it's, it's confusing, but uh, it's two different, two different amazing projects. So well, I got to shout you out because I actually have been binging the show. Ooh. I've been watching the show. I've been enjoying you in the show. Thank enjoying you. Cynthia in the show. Everybody, I actually was asking one of my um uh, one of my castmates. I was like, "Have you been getting it?" Because he he um shout out to him. He was in the band. You know, they have the uh, the the Muscle Shoals band. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. everything that I let me just say this. First of all, it's a it's a big brain fart for me because every time I look at everything, I'm like, "Oh, that's their version of this." Yeah. And that's their, yeah. You know what I mean? Like. Even seeing you, like I'd be like, "Oh, that's going. That's how I'm gonna look when I'm doing." Like this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it, yeah. it really is like it's just uncanny to be like it's it's just like a, a double of everybody, not just mm -hmm. us. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But we felt this before with Motown. We have felt it before, and that happened. So she was on um, Motown and on Broadway, and I was on the first national tour in Chicago, and. That that was the first time. So it would be like, you know, the Saycon track or Saycon, you, I'm like, and they would actually call me Saycon on accident because oh, I guess, no. oh, Lord. <laughs> I don't, but I didn't mind, you know, I was like, well, she's talented and she's cute, so I'm just roll with it. If she look, like, I always tell, look, not I always say, why y'all why think we look like? Because we got a big butt and a smile. <laughs> what they say? But you can trust they, a big butt they, and a smile. Never yeah. a big butt. Smile is what the word said. I said you can trust. You can oh, trust. you can trust. You should trust it. I changed the word. I changed the words. Come on, remix. Bobby Parker says, Patrice, you are so beautiful. Enjoyed you in the movie. Thank Shout you. Shout out to Denise on stage. The wonderful Denise out of Texas. Hey, Denise. Omar oh. Dorsey. <laughs> we love you, my Omar. Miss you more. I Omar. Guess he played his doppelganger because Titus played the role that he played. Yep. Yep, uh, James Cleveland. So Omar, everybody know Omar is Hollywood. So Hollywood. Hollywood from Queen Sugar, y'all. I posted a picture, like most of the comments said, Hollywood! <laughs> but uh, yeah, he plays uh, James Cleveland in our production, in this series. Yeah, everybody is used to knowing people for like different roles and mm -hmm. stuff like that. What would you say in your career, before any of this Irma Franklin, Aretha Franklin movie stuff happened, what would you say you were, have been most known for in your career, as far as roles that you Say, say it again. Squeak. Oh, squeak. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Color purple. Yep. So then my six degrees of separation was that I played Nettie in the first version of Color Purple that they did in Atlanta. And I don't even know. I don't even think I knew you then. I'm, I be get telling on my age, Lord. Young child, you've been working since a very tender age. And then we did, <laughs> we did that. We did that first Color Purple one. Oh, I think it was like 2003. Wait, original. Yeah, 2004, 2003 with LaChance. This was before Broadway, though. Yes, yeah. It was uh, a yeah. tryout. It yeah. was just before Oprah Winfrey came on as, as a producer. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then when I did The Color Purple on Broadway, the, the revival, I almost said the remix. <laughs> when I did the revival. Remix. Uh, I did, I covered Nettie. So, still. Another one, you know. Right, right. And but, we, we were in the same, we were in the, we were sharing a similar theater because then I was doing Eclipse and we had the same driveway. Yeah. We were at the Golden, what theater, what was the theater y'all were at? Ours was the Bernard B. Jacobs and you were, what was it called? The Golden, Golden Theater. I think Golden. the Golden. Y'all yeah. theater people correct me. I'm terrible. I've been on Broadway. <laughs> I don't even know what theater I'll be at. I'll be like. I can tell you, I can tell you Wicked was the Gershwin. I can tell you that. And, we and then Jacina Calacango who played Nettie in your production was it went to my high school. Y'all's y'all's high school is so lit. Tri Cities. Y'all you know, up here. Say, say it again. I said ATL where y'all at? Because I know y'all up here. That school produces so much talent. You mean it's like another there's a school in Houston, the one that Beyonce went to. Then there's, you know, Duke Ellington, and there's the LaGuardia. And then we have our little version of it, too, from in Virginia called the Governor School for the Arts, producing a lot of great things, too. Oh, do, are there some people that, a lot of people that we know that came out of um, the Governor's School? Uh, yeah, we have 
Adrian Warren, Miss Tina. We have Anthony Wayne. We have Tiffany Everest. We have um, the Flash Grant. Um, we have I, your hotness. All <laughs> these names. We have <laughs> Patrice Covington. <laughs> oh, somebody said. Oh, Omar, he coming for your school, boo. Oh, excuse me. Omar, don't be, look here, look here, AT, look here. Don't be coming for Tri-Cities. He said Tri-Cities ain't got nothing on, on Decatur. DeKalb, <laughs> what are you talking about, DeKalb County School of the Arts? Oh, and Jakina Kalakango, it says she just mentioned me in her story. She must be in the room. Is Jakina in the room? Here. I don't know, I just got my little. Oh, my, my mother also reminded me of Emmy, Emmy Raver Lampin. She went yes. to government school too. It's a lot of good talent. But I love that, you know, that when you can go to school with these people, you know, coming up, come, becoming, coming of age, and then you get to go have a career with some of these people, too. My best yeah. year in your school, Talia. Talia, yes. <laughs> also, I did Rent, and Talia did Rent. We were both Chocolate Mimi's. I love that. The National, Tour, the National Tour of Rent. She always talks about you and um, Maisha, like how she really looked up to y'all, like, she wanted to do everything y'all did. Y'all were like the chocolate inspirations, I think. Aisha McQueen, when we did, um, we did Dream Girls at my at Tri Cities. My mm -hmm. was Effie, and right. she killed it. I wonder, if, I would love it if she were in the room to give a little love. It's always nice to see everybody, you know. Okay, so let's talk about Irma. Let's give the people what they want, child. Give it to them. <laughs> Wait, let's give it to them. Okay, so Irma, did you know anything about Irma? When you were cast, before you were cast? Before I was cast, for me, for my project, I auditioned for several different roles um, before I, I auditioned. Um, I think Irma was my third, the third role I auditioned for. And um, I just, you know, I had to go in and do that little research so that I could have an idea a little bit more of her life. And one of the, the things that... Um, I was surprised to find out was that she was the original singer of Peace of My Heart. The best thing ever. You know, yeah. The best thing ever, which everybody, we know Janis Joplin. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, you know, the big famous. She made it famous. But you know, that's how back then they used to just steal songs. Like you could say, Con, you could put out a song this week and next week I do it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I can imagine that nowadays. Like, you know, that's the thing about like, popular music during that era that's the thing people would be like this is my version of skylark yeah. this is her version of skylark yeah. this is my version of stormy weather this is your version of stormy weather but yeah. then as time kept going you know people always talk about the the whole blue-eyed soul thing of it all right you know I, the thing that i would say that i did not realize that i learned in just processing and, and understanding this family understanding irma understanding um aretha was that it really was a family affair. Like it wasn't just Aretha just out there by herself doing this music, you know, like her father managing her career, her sisters helping to write songs, her sister singing with her. You know, I, I always compare them to the Braxtons. I think about like- no! like You too, oh my gosh. In the interviews, I'm like, you know, I think like the Braxtons are house- You too, I love it. Full of music, like you know, mm -hmm. they make songs out of anything, you know. Yes, I, that reference. See, yes. So the thing, then the thing about it for me that makes me say it too is that they're all so talented, right? Mm -hmm. But Tony somehow, so they, yes. you know, they all had different versions of yes. This, they singing this, they trying to get, they trying to get deals, record deals, da da da, and then Tony just, you know, took off. Yep. You know. And Aretha, her stuff took off, you know, but they were all in the industry. Just like that. Yeah. Yeah, I feel the exact same way. Um, that the bit about Peace of My Heart was really something for me. Um, and then I looked up, you know, her other songs. Um, I wasn't really familiar with any of them, but I listened to them, you know, as we were doing the project and there's still some really like some really great songs and the whole thing back then was like it didn't chart i'm sure you guys probably talk about that charting thing in yeah. your project a lot too like yeah if it didn't chart it just was nothing or or you didn't or your your label dropped you or whatever like 
you know what's the thing that's interesting to me about that era versus this era now is it seemed i will say this they had a lot of opportunities to fail in my opinion like putting out record after record after record after record and it not charting like Aretha has so many records 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 and to to have all these different records before she was actually a star you know we experienced the same thing when we were studying Motown you know mm -hmm. the fact yeah. that they had a chance nowadays it's like it's like I feel like certain types of artists get chance you you can get a chance to mess up and then other types of artists don't get a chance to mess up you know what i mean like to have that opportunity to have a flop yeah to have a flop mm -hmm. is is a is a uh it's a bit of grace that i think everybody is not extending yeah. you know? i'm sure you'll if you haven't been asked this already i i get asked it every single time um in an interview or whatever like you know what made it why do you think aretha made it and irma didn't or like why did tony make it and tamar didn't you know but yeah. tamar well, Tamar, Tamar's having her new right. record. Tamar did take it, so let me use that example. But you know what I Look, mean. Look, and she says she ain't want to be just do wop, wop, pop, pop, bop, bop, blop. I love Tamar's voice. I love Tamar as well. Tamar said, I'm, I got more going on. Oh, hey, Alan Barnes, what's up, what's up? The Supremes had many opportunities as well. It's very true. It's very, very true. So do you feel like the difference was Dad, C.L. Franklin? With his... um. Just his support of her. He was like a machine behind her. Yeah. I think there was that. And I mean, and you can't deny, you know, certain types of voices. At the time, the way that she was able to, um, you know, the similar way that Ray Charles was able to come out of the gospel and blend that gospel with that pop, with that funk, with that soul, you know, I think absolutely the, the, you know, you never know just what what special sauce is in the gumbo that makes. Come make, on, special sauce in the gumbo. Special sauce in the gumbo. You know what I mean? I, I feel like I was watching. There was a scene I saw because um, you know I have been watching. I've been watching. Thank there you. There was a scene where um, spoiler alert because it's a series. It's out. It's all available. It's been out for two weeks, y'all. Okay. You late? Not a not a heavy heavy spoiler, but there was a scene where. Um, you you and uh, well Irma you playing Irma and um Aretha were you were at a club and you were watching Lena Horn mm -hmm. thing and you were sitting there having your drink talking about man we putting out our records yeah. and what's going on with our music what's what's going to happen for us you know and it's so interesting because the reality of seeing that even me who, who studied these characters and I'm familiar with and I love Lena Horn just love the idea of these a woman who became so big, just imagining her thinking like, when is my turn going to happen? It's like, baby, your turn happens. It happens. Like, boy, boy, will it happen? You yeah. know? Yes. Somebody um put up a little bit ago about the it factor. And I remember being told like, you have the it factor. Like when I was young, like in high school and I understood what it meant you know, as I grew older, and I, I think you have the it factor as well. This is why I'm talking about it. But like, you know, it's just that one thing that makes you watch that person on the stage. Like, you know, it's somebody in the ensemble, you're like, oh, she getting it. Or he, you know, he's really hitting it. Something, an uh, inner light, a something that you can't, I can't really explain it, you know? Yeah. yeah. Which is you can't put your finger on it. You can't, but it just makes you want to watch that person. You yeah. make know more and like just go along with whatever it is they sharing on the stage or on the yes. stage. and I do think that Aretha has the it factor too and that's I think that's what the genius part of it you know being that being the name of our our show genius is you know god-given gift uh, unexplainable you know yes. you just have it you just yeah. have it. and yeah. I often just talk about that too because what I'm sure they did everything together as singers, you know, as sisters, as singers growing up. But there's just something about Aretha. That that it, yeah. I'll tell you what, this is, a, this is a thing, that particular it factor, and this is something that I say to a lot of people. A lot of people are in my inbox, you know, um, and, and email me. They hit me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, everything, and they're asking about how to get into the business. Um, they're worried about how they look, they're worried about their weight, they're worried about their height, 
they're worried about what type of voice they have, you know. And um, I did a I did this video a while ago on my YouTube channel, and I said I use what I call the mango method, <laughs> which basically, like you said, don't be a star, be a galaxy, right? That's right. I, I always acknowledge that I am a mango, right? So no matter where I go, I will always be me. I will always have what you would say or call the it factor. I always have my personal it factor. Okay. I won't be Halle Berry. I won't be Vivica A. Fox. You know, I will always be me. And I think the thing that has um, allowed both both of us to flourish in this industry, um, to continue to book, to book jobs, to be on shows that people would never even think of, to be like you said, I remember one time you were you were calling you were about to go on a cruise ship to go sing somewhere. You know, I I went and sang in Ethiopia one time. The reason these blessings they come is because we trust the the individual singular talent that we have as individuals, and it is your own individual it factor. So that's always um, my advice that I would. I would say for people to really believe you have to, it sounds like hocus pocus Lord. And if you're not into any type of spirituality or, you know, maybe you don't go to church. I don't know. Everybody has their different things that they do or don't believe, but I really believe that you have to trust that what has been laid out for you, the, 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 how you've been naturally drawn is how you will be naturally blessed, you know, because when you spend time worrying about trying to be like somebody else, trying to look like somebody else, trying to sing like somebody else, I'll tell y'all, I've had so many uh, from from the past during the times that I, I mean, I've hurt my voice trying to sing different than I know than I naturally sing, you know. Um, I, I just I'm just really aware and so thankful. Um, ooh, alarms! I'm so thankful of of my my self-awareness now that self-awareness is powerful you know it's like like i'm aware of this alarm of <laughs> y'all can y'all hear that alarm is it just me no i hear it you can hear it. okay yeah that self-awareness it's like a big big thing like so what i would say the mango method is like when i walk into the room i'm a mango every audition i go to i'm a mango right so i show up i'm a mango you know i'm a juicy mango i'm a <laughs> I was a juicy mango. Why do you use mango? Because uh, is it because of um, uh, once on this island? No, uh -oh. no, 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 no. It's not even like that's a coincidence. I'm a watermelon. <laughs> right. So right. So you're a watermelon, right? So if you go into an audition, right, and there's a bunch of bananas in there, you don't go into the audition and you're like, oh my god, they're only looking at bananas. Mm -hmm. I'm not fit in. No, you bust up in there like the mango's no. here love that and i get that but why did you choose mango as the food? i don't know i don't know girl mango i don't know it's just juicy. i like mango is exotic it's bright it's yes juicy. yes a ripe juicy mango i don't know why i chose mango because it's rare mango mango is rare it's not yes. i could have said peach because i'm from georgia i could have said peach i could have said apple no, I think I think there's something to that. That's why I was asking. I mean, you mentioned the mango method. You know, I got the galaxy method. The galaxy is basically what we're doing right now, which is sharing the light. The whole don't be a star, be a galaxy thing. You know, like, I actually just pinned a comment from someone that says, the series was great. Uh-oh. I see it. Well, I can't read the whole thing anymore. Let me press more. It says, the series was great, and I'm sure the movie is going to be great too. I wish people would stop trying to pit the two against each other. Exactly. So that's that's honestly why we're here. Because when I called you to congratulate you and tell you that I was doing Irma too, like this is what we looked like at that very <laughs> time. Like so we much like what? So yeah. much joy, so much happiness um for each other and pride. I cannot wait until y'all's movie come out. Like Cannot wait. Cannot wait. I'm so excited. We both have friends in both projects. Yes. And it's just light sharing, you know? And this woman, she deserves every celebration that the world can come up with, honestly, you know? And it's going to be similar at times, and it may be different at times. Mm -hmm. and, and audience who got a problem with y'all just have to get over it. I mean, get right over it. <laughs> for real, for real. Yeah, no, it's just, it's a powerful thing. You know, the fact that this whole pandemic has been happening over this past year 
Um, how did y'all, like, how was that for y'all? Like, we we wrapped filming just before, we wrapped principal photography just before the world was shut down. So when when everything happened, had y'all been um, filming? Were y'all filming already? Were y'all still filming? What was that process for you? Girl, so we started filming in December of 19. And in March, when the shutdown happened, we had shot three episodes, three out of eight. Okay. So we got shut down in the middle of everything. So we all went. Girl, remember when everybody thought it was we started a around the same time too? Because I remember um, we were there at the same time. Yes, we were in Atlanta at the same time. Cynthia was texting me like, "Yeah, we're gonna try to get together." I was thinking, I don't know what get together she finna try to do while she is filming an entire starring role. Right. But I thought, okay, yeah, let's try to you know. <laughs> Lovely. So no, I just feel like. Um, yeah, it was about March. Remember when we all thought it was going to be two weeks? A shutdown was going to be two weeks long? I hung out in Atlanta because I had a bomb-ass apartment. I was like, ooh, I'm about to just stay here and, you know, just take a break for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> that two weeks? Like, that two weeks turned into something, huh, y'all? Like, oh. I so guess wait, what happened? They told you they're they sending you home. Uh, eventually, most of us were like, I'm leaving. <laughs> but because nobody knew anything, you know, they, they weren't like, we're sending you home or you have to stay or nobody, everybody was just like, nobody knew anything. So I went home to my mama's house and my sister's house in Virginia. And I was there for like a month when that expired. And then so you had, quarantined with your family for the first for like, month. Yep. Okay. Yep. And then I uh, came back home to LA and then in the whole time we had no idea when it was going to get picked up. I did eventually get confirmation that we were going to continue because at one point, say, kind, I was like, oh, God, they're going to just throw the whole project away. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. some projects didn't make it. Yeah, a lot of projects didn't make it. Yeah. 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 And I was so nervous and I was praying, but God answered that blessing. So uh, once we found out that we definitely were going back, we uh, we went back in September. Girl, that's when the COVID test started. And we got tested at one point every day during the week. Yeah. And we wrapped shooting just before Thanksgiving. Okay. Yeah. Well, so I had the same experience of the COVID tests. I was not doing not So my other project that some of you may or may not know is called Delilah. And it's on, um, yes, girl, Delilah. It's on the OWN Network. Um, Y'all might see all of my, I'm, it's so funny. I'm like so chill and laid back right now. But I was looking at these little pictures. I would, I'd be posting my little fun. I put on that Delilah, the character I play is Leah. I put on that Leah wig and the cleavage is out. And I'm just like. Somebody is. I feel like a totally different person. I mean, this really is a character. But I, I was filming the, um, the Delilah series during the pandemic as well. But I, I will say before I booked that, I went, um, like most artists, I was unemployed for a good chunk of time um and but then still um coming up with my own ways of entertaining uh, my own ways of expression you know really trying to um flourish as much as i could is it you, you came up with say kind talks your tea time you know what's funny yes tea time <laughs> give me a mug yes yes we have to get your mug for sure so look i say kind talks actually started started as a blog it's like if you go to saycontalks.com you'll you and click all the way back you'll see blogs all the way from 2003 i believe it started as a blog before social media was like hi lyric hi eric the cavapoo she yeah, was no, attention i she love was. lyric <laughs> so um before y'all see how i went crazy when i saw that dog <laughs> i love dogs but um uh, Saycom Talk started off as a as a uh, as a blog. I was just like writing articles. This was before social media was really like doing what it does now. And I remember reading online something that said basically you will your name will um, ping more on the internet if if you blog. So I started writing articles. It's, it's gonna sound so egotistical. I started writing articles about myself. <laughs> I would be like I would be like. I sang at the such and such theater for Broadway Cares, Equity Fights AIDS. Like I would write, whenever I sang somewhere or did something, I would write little articles. But of course I got bored writing about me. So then I started being like, actually,
actually one of my highest and I saw him in the in the chat somewhere Brian one of my highest um articles hi yes there he is the real BTC if you're still here show yourself show yourself if you're still here one of my highest rated rated articles on saycomtalks.com was an article I wrote um it was like Brian Terrell Clark plays Marvin Gaye in Motown the Musical like I just would just write articles you know, and, and I felt like um, I've always had this little part of me that was just interested in people and how they do things and why and just, you know, there are other people's careers and stuff. I have another article I wrote on Jason, uh, uh, Jason, um, Jason Michael Webb. Mm -hmm. And he said uh, it was about at the time he was conducting the choir that sang at Obama's um, inauguration. So I would be like you know, Motown musical director conducts choir. For, like, I just was writing articles or whatever. So, you know, often di at different times I would write, other times I wouldn't. I would step away from it, step into it. And, at, and I also wanted to start a podcast then, and I just never did. And so, honey, um, I had started a podcast a few months before, but of course, during the pandemic, there's just more time, you know. And so that's when I really decided to start doing it more on YouTube. So I would go live on YouTube sip tea and chit chat about whatever was on my mind and do an occasional interview you know with somebody um but mostly it was just like basically it's all about chill vibes you know just sit back relaxing and chilling you know just like um having a type of um hey mona lisa hey 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 y'all put <laughs> questions in the in the chat box if y'all have any Not yes please put your questions in there what is it the question I, are there any in there yet no Okay. Yeah, I just made it, I made it be something that would be fun. Um, and then I really got passionate about, uh, about uh, e-commerce, which is uh, something that I've just always enjoyed the idea of branding and marketing. And I've just, just always been really interested in that. Like, some of our, some of the artists who aren't, they may not be known for having like, um, being like the 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 most perfect vocalist or the most perfect musician or the most perfect whatever, but then they still can become um, really well known in business. I'm really inspired by by people like that, and so I started to just study, you know, study um, e-commerce and study how to. Um, I guess the art of being an influencer, you know which mm -hmm. is a bad word for many people. Um, but a lot of people don't like the term influencer and they, people swear, they, they, people hate themselves an the influencer. Meanwhile, they, they wipe, watching them and swiping, swiping, swiping every day. Who, who made words bad? Word influencer. You know what word I have a problem with? I mean, what you gonna do, boo? Um, Lyric is like, mommy, I don't know. What am I doing? I don't know. Who are you talking to? I'm jealous. I'm, what am I doing? Lyric, don't be jealous. Don't be jealous, Lyric. Jealous. Hey, Lyric, 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 we can talk to you too, boo. You can be in. You can be in the video, Lyric. She hates it. She was like, <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> um, you know a word that I I wish that people would um stop making a negative word. I think the word is opportunist, right? People, oh, she's. Oh. Come on, preach, preach this, preach this sermon right here. I'm ready for this. Come on, because I'm gonna let it read. I'm gonna let it preach. I'm here for it. Because, you know, your network is your net worth, right? And if I care about you and I want the best for you, and you're my friend, or if you're somebody I just met and I have the ability to help you, why would I not help you have an opportunity? Mm. Why would I not make the opportunity easier for you to get? Why would you not help me, say kind, if we're cool and we're friends and you're comfortable reaching out to somebody on my behalf and it's on your spirit to do so? Or if I ask you and you just want to help me, why is that bad? Mm. There's a difference. I understand being taken advantage of. Yes, absolutely. But the word opportunist, I just, I don't, I don't get it. I, it because we're supposed to, we're supposed to have opportunities. Yes. <laughs> like, have you seen that um there's a quote that floats around social media all the time that's about 
um, get used to a life of luxury. Like, especially, I think it actually is directed to black women. It says black women get start getting used to a life of luxury and not being judged for it or whatever, you know. And we do that. I know a lot of us do that. Mm-hmm. We feel bad because we spend five hundred dollars on a cowhide rug. Mm-hmm. We are often just <laughs> like we like because we're you know they want us to be. I hate to say it, there are factions of this world that would have us be the mules of the world, okay? Have us be the strong black woman, you know, toting that bail and whatever it is they, they, want, they want us to do, um, as if we don't deserve to have opportunities yeah. to have finer things. We deserve in that. We deserve it. We absolutely do. I love being the plug, Saikon. Like, it's one of my favorite things. I love yes. the plug. It's just in me to do that. And I know not everybody does that automatically or thinks mm-hmm. that or is like their their go-to thing. But mm-hmm. it is for me. I love yeah. so opportunist me, people, if I know you and I love yeah. you and I yeah. believe in talent. You can't be talent free. But you know what I mean? Like if- we, I, we absolutely have that in common. I'm going to tell you, whenever I audition for a show, do you do this? When you're auditioning, are you casting it in your head? Girl, I'll sometimes, you know, you know, who's really good at this? Rebecca Covington. Okay. Weber. She'll be like, Rebecca, no. congratulations on the baby. If you okay. want. Um, but she will literally be like, hey, I got this audition. I mean, it sounds just like you. And will send me the size, learn it and ask your people if, you know, you can get an audition for it. By the time they give me an audition, I've already got it memorized. Tape can be in five minutes because my sister sent it to me. I love Cause that's what, yeah. Cause that's what it is. That I mean, it really is a thing. Like you, you're looking at scripts. Cause yeah. that's the thing. Scripts are coming down. Oh, hey, Freddie, my ment- my mentor, Freddie Hendricks, is in here. In, 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 shout out to Freddie Hendricks from Tri Cities High School. I think I've heard uh, Maisha and Talia talk about Mr. Freddie Hendricks. I also believe he might have been on the phone one time when I was in the car with Maisha. We were all chatting. I think yes. that's. <laughs> Much love to Freddie. Yeah. Um, no, but absolutely. Like when I'm looking at, I have the exact same thing happen. When I'm looking at scripts, I'm not just, I mean, this, the whole being the plug, I, God, I feel that energy so hard, not only for our business that we're in, but for anything. Like if it, I'm here about something, I'm like, oh, they're doing that. Oh, you know, like, you know what it is? I think there's a part of you, there's a producer in you. You know what I mean? Like, that just wants things to happen and wants things to happen right. And no, that's good. That's good. Cause I got a guy for everything. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know somebody who could do your braids. I know somebody who do lashes. I know somebody who bedazzle shoes, you know, like my network is, is amazing. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. No, I always feel, I always feel um, compelled. I mean, it's almost like a compulsion. I feel compelled. I feel a compulsion. <laughs> Let me tell you, I, I've, one that's really sticking out for me right now is um, when the color purple was first. Um, we were doing a work; it was a workshop, like two thousand one, two thousand two. I don't know. It was a workshop, and they had the church ladies, and I remember um, being like, "My, you know, uh, Maya Wilson. Mm-hmm. Maya yeah. Wilson was in Atlanta at the time, and okay. I was like, Maya would be great in this." I was like, my, I was like, my, you know, do you know about the color purple? Do you know blah, 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 blah? Make a long story short, y'all. Maya Wilson ended up being one of the three original church ladies in Atlanta, on Broadway. The rest is history. But I absolutely sent her a script. I made a phone call. I said, you know what I mean? Like, and there's yeah. absolutely nothing wrong with that. Speaking of the color purple, there's a lot of color purple family in here. Uh, yeah. Then my my Carla Ruth. Carla, I think you meant sugaring. One time I, I took her to get sugar her her lip <laughs> sugar. Oh Lord, like a wax? <laughs> yeah, but they do it with sugar. And well, it was an experience. Um LA inflammation. Hey, what up? I hate his oh my god, it's really Patrice. I'm such a huge fan since Color Purple, since Little Shop. He's full of it. He's full of it. Full, full in a good way or bad way? I'm, I'm He's funny. He's my friend. Yeah. He- hey, Saint. Saint. Who else is in here? Oh, we got questions in here. Whoa, seven of them. Oh, keep these questions. Okay, here oh, we go. Laser hair. Is MZZZ Ruth? 
Ms. Ruth, is that Carla? That's Carla, yeah. Okay, here comes some questions, say. Hey, Carla. I'm just... I'm just um, scanning them first to make sure ain't nothing crazy. Look, honey, because people love to ask something crazy. Oh, this is a good one. We'll do this one first. Here we go. How many callbacks did you all have before y'all booked Irma, or did you just have one audition? Great job, Patrice and Genius and Saquon. Um, and I'm excited for the Wonder Years. That's awesome. I'm very excited for the Wonder Years, too. For those of you who don't know, Sister Saquon is going to be the mama on the new Wonder Years, the Black Wonder Years. ABC? Yes, ABC. ABC, yep. coming soon. That's we shoot our pilot, so y'all put love and energy and all that good stuff in there. That's going to be, like, mind-blowing huge. I haven't even... I'm still wrapping my head around that, y'all. I'm like... <clears throat> Jeez. Okay, so... um. I'll talk about my audition process first and then um, you can go. So I was actually um, on the road singing background for Christina Aguilera when I had my audition. You just posted about this too, right? I did. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I was on the road singing with her. We were in Vegas in a Vegas hotel room. And, you know, I was with band guys. Who going to help me with this tape? Because <laughs> they don't know. They don't know how to, they, like, you know. It's almost like being at home with your cousins in them and you need Yeah, to and they like, <laughs> somebody focus longer. Can you focus for five minutes just to no. read? No, be reading stuff crazy. But so, <laughs> luckily, one of my fellow background singers, name is Matt Kusan. Love him. He has a wife who is uh, an actress and he knew how to do a self-tape. And we're in that room. We had like no time. He's like, my wife does self tapes all the time. Yeah, she had trained them up. Like perfect. I was like, I believe you. Come on, let's do it. Right. <laughs> perfect. So perfect. he um, we had like no time either. Like Christina Aguilera has a tight ship. Like there was a lot of rehearsals. We were leaving the next day to go to like New Orleans for a hot second, just to come right back to Vegas. It was crazy time. Like, hey, be amazed that you were singing with Christina Aguilera. Let me be like, wow. Okay. <laughs> now nah, go ahead. I'm sorry. That was just, good you know, I mean, so me and Christina Aguilera what had happened. <laughs> that was very nostalgic all the time. Yeah. You know, mm. pre middle school. It was it was really special. Um, but anyway, so I we got the tape done. Honestly, it was the first time that I had never really like watched back a tape. I didn't have time, say con. I didn't have time to like analyze it and like, oh, I like this one because my shirt was in, um, I blinked or, you know, something stupid. I had no time. You just, sent it. you just recorded it and sent it. I sent it off. And I didn't think about it no more because like I said, Christine, I was working, you know? Mm. And maybe, I don't know if it was a week later. It may have been a week later. Friend, but got a call from my agents and they were like um they want to they want to test you i was like test for what <laughs> like wait, I, was this, wait, I, wait was this your first test your first network test screen test yes girl you better book a tv but wait, no it's I'm not yes. even, ain't even, that ain't even it though sister so then after that, yes, that is that's fly. No, oh no, no, it's not. Hold your hold your horses. So then, um, they called me. They're like, okay, they're gonna call you. I was gonna figure out when I was gonna fly home from Vegas just for the day to be back in time. Like it was a little crazy. I was like, but it's gonna all work out, you know. So I'm waiting on this particular day. I'm expecting a phone call for them to say, "Hey, your test is gonna be Thursday at 10. Okay. I pick up the phone. Hello, Patrice. They don't want you to test. You got the role. Girl! I, I never tested. Girl, you've never had a network test and you are no. sitting over here. And you're you're regular. regular. No. Let me tell you how God answers prayers because this is what else I didn't know. So I did not know that you sign your contract for a series regular role before you get Yeah, the, before you start working. Yeah. Well, be, before you, you get You the, sign it before you test. Yes. Right. Yes. So my lawyer and everybody had been through all the paperwork, right, to get so everything. Wait, wait. So your offer had came in and everything? The offer was in. And I, so when. Wait, I, can I, wait, can I in, interject this for people who don't know? When you are, if 100 women audition for a show, then they narrow it down to 20. Then they narrow it down to five. 
the five women or three that they narrow down to, those are the people who will, who will test, test for the network for the role. What she's saying is she skipped the hundred, she skipped the 20, she skipped the five. She just got an offer. Okay, this is why when y'all see but, this excitement, I'm just like, because I've tested for numerous shows and, and something like this has not happened. So this is like amazing. Once I knew what that offer was, and then I still had to test. I was like, I ain't gonna get it because that number is oh. gonna change my life. I was like, there's no way. I ain't gonna be able to focus, God. How? How am I gonna go in there and do anything, right? Thinking about it, she girl worrying about a chick. Worrying about a chick. I was but see when you know when a black woman when you know that you deserve money, when you know that money is just yours to have, it just comes. Then you don't be worried about it, honey. You just go look at uh, Mona Lisa said, first place, first place. And you going in there, you know you're a juicy mango and your galaxy is sparkling. <laughs> you just, you just going that. in there just... <laughs> she said, bag, 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 bag. Honey, you in there going to get the bag. What is for you is for you. It was my biggest lesson in that. Like, it could have never passed me by. I have never in my life mm -hmm. until then sent in a tape and not looked at it back a million times and judged myself. Look at that. Never. Look at that. Look yeah. at that. Yeah. You, so even the work, the audition of it all, you didn't even worry about it. The audition of it all, you didn't even worry about yeah. it. That yeah. is beautiful. That is like, I mean, I like that will, ooh, I mean, it's giving me chills. Like it's really giving me chills because um, I've been really um, testifying to that feeling, that understanding of like what's for you. <laughs> Look at Lyric, Lyric. <laughs> what's for you is for you it you know was. i know we were talking earlier um i don't i don't get all i don't talk about it a lot but on occasion i will express and i'll and i'll sort of tie it in to answer the question with me as well um because so basically patrice is saying she didn't have a bunch of callbacks and even the one callback that would have been her test she did not have to have she was blessed with this opportunity um for me i auditioned um um i auditioned for uh I can't think of names right now. I auditioned for other, two other roles on the movie, and then I auditioned for Irma. And when I was auditioning for Irma in the uh, Aretha Franklin movie Respect, which is the one that I'm in for those latecomers, um, I I just had a, I I did have a very similar sort of synergetic feeling that like yeah, if they don't get it to me, it's just because they want a name or something. Because I know that when I I know that what I'm bringing is gonna be a vibe that's so real, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget, um, um, if y'all know the actor Benga Akinagbe, he was in the the um, the lobby, I guess, of the, you know, like the little waiting room area when mm -hmm. I went into, and I was on my, I think my, that was my call. I think it's because I had two callbacks. It, they all run together because I auditioned for two other roles first, you know what I'm saying? So Mary J. Blige ended up <laughs> playing one of the roles. I was like, see, they don't want me. They want Mary J. Blige. Huh? Was Mary J. Blige Ruth Bowen? No, no. Ooh. Mary J. Blige was uh, 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 the mom. No, no, no. She's um. Oh, Claire Ward. No, I auditioned for Clara and I auditioned for uh, and Clara is Heather Headley, and then I auditioned for um, yes, and I auditioned for um, who did Mary J. Blige play? <laughs> What's her name? Played her. Um, who also I, people think I look like as well. Um, in um, our production, somebody who who? Yeah, she sings. She, huh? Dinah Washington. Dinah Washington. Dinah Washington. Stacy. Yeah. Yes, Stacy. So I auditioned for that as well. Yes, yes. Got it. So Thanks. help everybody. I was like, oh, I just was saying. I was like, mm, I wonder if they want a name. Look, y'all. I know I'm fly. I know I'm fly, but I'm not a name. Not at this point. You know what I'm saying? I might be a name in like a Broadway scene but we are talking about movies let me tell y'all this is a part of the thing too is to be okay there's a there's this fine balance that you have that you have of being very realistic but then also being like but i know that things happen for me as they happen right so me knowing how movies happen and how things lay out sometimes there are certain roles that they will take um they will want to have somebody who has a huge following to come you know to build that into the role you know what i mean so Anyway, every time I audition, I thought, ooh, they want a name. They're going to want a name. They're going to want a name. They're going to want a name. So um, 
uh, when I came out, Banga Akinagbe was standing outside. I don't know what I sang, but he was like, oh, he was like, you got the part. Oh. And I was like, what? He was like, yeah, um, he's like, you got the part. <laughs> I was uh -oh. like, like, it was, you know, good to see you, whatever. Yeah. And yeah, a couple of days later, I got a phone call and I find, found out that I got the part. You know, it it wasn't, um, I didn't have this miraculous, oh my God. Very miraculous. So you had that miraculous moment. But I will say, every time I get a role, every time somebody tell, every time, every time the agent and the manager call at the same time, you I know. totally know that that's some good news. Because yeah. they don't, they don't, they don't sync the phone calls uh -huh. up like nothing. They say Okay, I've got the team on for you. You're like, oh shit. You be like the team. <laughs> the team. <gasps> you be like the team. What the team? You be like, what the team? And it's like, y'all see how I got up. Like, Hello, team. Hello, team. Hello. You be like the team on the phone. Let me ask you this. Yes. Whenever you book a role, do you? Who do you call first? Girl, I don't call nobody first. When I first book a role, I have to ground myself because I be like. I just have to like ground myself. And I usually will go take a walk. Okay. Or, or I'll take my friend Christine Horn. She always says, I, she said, girl, I took a traipse. Like, like you go walk, like go walk through, walk through the grocery store. Like I'll just like take a walk or something. I always have to just kind of walk it off. Uh -huh. And probably after I walk it off, probably my brother is usually the first okay. person. Yeah, either my brother or my friend Christine. Um, for those of y'all who don't know, Christine Horn, aka the Booking Magnet, who some of y'all may have seen last night on um, Snowfall. She had a she has a nice guest star, recurring guest star on Snowfall. She was a good. Uh, she also went to Tri City. She was um, she was in um, on Broadway. She was in Lion King at one point, Lion King tour, um, and she uh, is just she's an amazing actress who's been in numerous numerous television shows. like literally you call her the booking magnet like if you go under her imdb she has like probably like 60 plus roles she's been on everybody's show i love that played harriet tubman on timeless okay. um just brilliant actress so usually i would either probably usually i would tell my brother but i usually keep it to myself and i'm gonna tell you why um, and we got to answer another one of these questions. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you why I usually keep, when I first find out, I keep it to myself. It was a long time ago, I shot a movie called um, Funny Valentines. And because um, I was getting scared when you were telling your story. You, why you get Lyric the mean mama look? Like, uh, she's over here like growling at our neighbors walking by. You done gave Lyric the look like if you, when you start pinching your lip like that. Stop, Stop too. Look, so I was afraid of what you were about to say. What happened to me on Funny Valentine's, I'll never forget it. I booked this movie called Funny Valentine's. It was starring Loretta Devine and Alfred Woodard. And I was to play the younger version of Loretta Devine. And I got the call. You got the part. You got Like, we drove up to North Carolina. I was living in Georgia at the time. We drove to North Carolina, auditioned for the movie, blah, blah, blah. Found out I got the part. And do you know, three days later, those people called me and told me they changed their mind. Change their mind on that ass. I was like, <gasps> and so after that, I stopped telling people. I can understand. Another two days later, they called me again and told me I had the part. So for any of y'all who've seen Funny Valentine's, it comes on BET every once in a while. I played the young Loretta Divine character. The character's name is Deary B. Now I gotta go look it up. Yeah, the character's name is Deary B. And so. Ever since that happened, I started being like, until I get my paperwork, I ain't telling nobody nothing. Until I get my, I've been looking at paperwork. I, yeah, I, you know, I call my mama. She'll never. I mean, if I, I can guarantee you that Rosalind Covington won't answer that phone when I call her with some good news. With some good news. <laughs> hey, you mean you answer the phone for everything else? Guarantee. When I'm, I'm screaming and ready for you to answer the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Like, she, I'm like, ma. I tried to call you because I don't. Now, yeah. you know, I think one of my my friend Day, she used to always say that I was very secretive. She'd be like, "Why are you so secretive?" But like the the um the feeling of um, I feel like the feeling of disappointing others is just it it used it's not so big anymore. Now I don't really be caring, but I used to I used to always be like, I don't want to disappoint people. I don't want um. Oh, Nat King Corey, you saw Funny Valentine? Yeah, it's hard. It's a hard. Ooh. I mean, it's a beautiful movie, but my character, she gets abused. It's, it's tough. But um, that feeling of um, 
letting people down. Like, I be feeling like I can deal with it. Like, if I get the part and then I find out I didn't get it and then I get, I can deal with that. But then to be taking the whole family on that ride up and down, I just don't be wanting to go through that. Well, my so, like, Mama Rise Cove also says, less you say, the less you got to take back. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I think I've always sort of had that kind of, I've always had this feeling of, of discretion. Um, but, you know, it's natural human nature to want to freaking scream and jump up and down. You know what I mean? So it, it all depends on how I feel. Like, sometimes I feel really solid in a place where I'm ready to tell people about this thing. And then other times I feel like it's like a seed and I need to keep it dark in the dirt. Yeah. You know, before I let it grow. So. All right. Uh, next. Oh, next story. Yeah. Oh, look, listen, let me read this one. Okay, go ahead. Next story says, can y'all talk about the pros and cons and verses uh, between Broadway and tour life? Do you mean um, tour of like a Broadway production? Just yeah. for like how I tour it with. Or concert tour. Yeah. Because that's different too. Yeah, super different. Um, I guess, I mean, we both have done Broadway and tour. So um, I think the pro for Broadway for me is that you get to go home and have like a life. When you're on tour, for me, everything matters because it's just this bubble. This is all you have is these people. You eat, sleep, and breathe these people and nothing else. Mm. Um. You know, you wake up with them in a hotel, you fly with them or you're on the bus with them and then you eat with them in between shows. It's only that. And so things that happen, personal stuff or or show related business stuff, it's like your world and that's it. I loved having a life outside of that. Just go to work for two or three, or three hours and then go live my regular New York life. Mm, mm. You know? I am very much a person that like, I love what we do. I don't want to do nothing else. But it does not define me. Like, I'm also like a black girl from Virginia that happens to love city life who's looking for a man. Amen. Um, oh, we're single. We are single. <laughs> <laughs> Something else we have. to give them a the close up view <laughs> of the. Let them know. But you know what wondering we are both both the Irmas are single yes we're single living hey single it's still 2021 draco laughing draco. <laughs> i mean like i just love having a life outside of acting or you yeah. know when my i like my circle it has a lot of Art, artist in it of many sorts but I, like my best friend is a nurse practitioner for women's health you know like and and Talia who is just like me you know like we I just have people in all areas of my life like I don't like to get stuck into just the acting world so that's the pro for Broadway for me what would you say for me um I haven't done as much concert touring I I um I did. I sang backgrounds for uh for Lauren Hill for a quick little. You quick did? Little... <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, I did not know that. Yes. Yeah. It was um, and and I I found it, it was one of the most beautiful experiences ever. I mean, just so beautiful in so many ways. Um, I went to Africa. My sec my second my second time I went to Africa was because I was invited to go sing backgrounds with Lauren Hill. That's. Um, so yeah, that was an amazing experience. And what what'd you say? Did y'all's concert start on time? <laughs> <laughs> My tea tastes very delicious. <laughs> oh, okay. But it was the, but the concert was banging. I tell you that. It's hard. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say it was banging. Um. Lauren Hill, Miss Hill, um, is just like a, I w almost would want to say a bona fide genius. I find her to be a genius, brilliant, all of that. Beautiful opportunity. But similar to what you say, when you're on tour in that type of setting, it's just that bubble. But like you say, with the Broadway thing, you can um, go home. 
But then I saw he did put in there that he was asking about Broadway tour versus Broadway in like New York on Broadway. Mm -hmm. And I will say, like if I compare, for example, when I did the Broadway tour of Aida versus doing um Aida. Yes, um I see Eric in the comments, Funk Life Forever. Eric, you can Google the Google you'll find the uh the concert on YouTube. Some somebody got some good co concert clips. Lauren Hill in, in Ghana. You look it up, you'll you'll see it. Um I uh I felt like being on the road I learned how to be uh, by myself being on the road like just be so comfortable with being by myself like when you're on tour with a Broadway show you know like you say everybody's going home at the end of the night it's a job we're singing right but like or sometimes you might hang you, know, you might hang with your you know with your cast but like if you want to go see if you like oh my god the new the new um x-men movie is coming out friday night and nobody in your cast likes x-men you be like oh well i guess i'm going me and storm gonna be getting it in. you know what i mean because you're not gonna just wait yeah for people to go do stuff with you like when i was on tour i did so many things um i did a lot of things with friends i mean I, i've been on like i went on i was on the rent national tour of rent um national tour of aida uh, national tour of Fela. Um, like I, I just learned how to, how to function as myself, you know, like you think, not be afraid of being, take myself to dinner, take myself to the spa, take myself to the park. For like young doing rent versus on, on tour than when you were doing, what was the last tour you did, Fela? Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And, you, and I only, and I only did that for a couple of weeks. I was, yeah, it was just for a couple of weeks, but yeah. Okay, but like I do, like my first tour ever was Beehive the '60s musical. I was like twenty three, I think, or something. Mm -hmm. Versus when a couple of years ago, when I was on tour with Stevie and them at the age that I am now, which is much older. You know, <laughs> it it's a. I think I think a lot of it has to be different. Look, as I always say, you want to go home and scramble your own eggs. Like you I, just want, uh -oh. you know. What I mean? It's only it's, but so many runny ass eggs you can get at the at the hotel. You yeah, know, like I true. mean that's you know what I mean? That's a good way to sum it up. So I, I can feel you on that. Did we answer your question that King Corey? All right, I'm moving on. I to, hope you did. Um let's see. Okay. And I think they are talking about um in the film, in the series, what concert did you guys enjoy filming the most? That's a good question, because I wanna answer it. Okay, go, 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 go. And hey, I, let me go. Look, the reason I got excited is because, sorry, my pillow fell. The reason I got excited is because when I saw your scene of this, I was like, oh, that's our scene. Okay. What is it? What is it? I can't wait to see my scene. <laughs> was, um, oh, Lord, uh, Amsterdam, when all the flowers are yeah, coming yeah. on a thing. <laughs> I was like, oh, Amsterdam. Like, I automatically, when I saw all the flowers. Yeah. Um, I guess so. So, my movie hadn't come out yet. So, I get excited because I'm watching her acting like I'm watching mine. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is real. <laughs> I hope that people. So understand. when the flowers and the Amsterdam, I was like, oh, I like that. Yeah. You know, so that was my favorite. What about it was you? My favorite too. Um, honestly, it was my favorite. Draco, who is our choreographer, who I'm not sure if he's still here or not. Um, and actually, guess who? The, I don't know if you noticed, but um, the oh, was the choreographer Warren? No, Draco is the choreographer. Oh, okay, okay. Worked with previously in a play. I forgot the name of the play, but if he's up here, he'll say it. Um, okay, okay. But um, Mila from 702, where my girl's at from the front to back. Yes, I saw her. <laughs> yeah, okay. Later, because she was singing the Black later. Power Style songs. Yep. Um, yeah, I yeah, said yeah. it, baby. But no. Mila, as well as Erica, who got me the job with Christina Aguilera, the three of us were singing background. In and the studio scene. It, and also the Amsterdam scene that we're talking about, that concert. Oh, but, so she was on that too? Okay, okay. Yeah, the same group. But uh, yeah, that concert, like the steps that Draco was giving us, it was just quick and fun and like mm -hmm. so like girl groupy. I loved it. I loved it. And they had it looking and feeling like it was really hot in Amsterdam. Like just the... Yeah, sweating. Uh, Gotta yeah. come make sure you look sweaty. All that. All yeah. that all Jesse! That little... Jesse's here. Jesus. Is Jesse touring B Way Boy? The Ken now. Jesse Warren. 
snake. What's his name? What's his uh, Instagram name? Touring Touring Bro with. Oh, Touring B with. Bro. Okay. Look, people don't name don't be their name, and then I'll I'll be like, who? Jesse, I love you and I miss you too much. Um, and Jesse, for me, I, huh? For me, doing this um doing this show or I'm um, doing the movie for me and doing the show for you, I'm sure. The whole thing, what you just said about all the girly moves, like I just like I've loved like. Like I like we grew up during the era. I mean, like in Vogue, Destiny's Child, TLC. Like even though, so it is a movie about Aretha, right? But being the sisters in the back and being like, you know, doing your little thing, and like I love, I just love, I love girly ass shit. Like this is why I get along with women so well because I enjoy, I just enjoy women, our energy together, like women being like girly talking, girl talk doing the, the physical exaggeration of it with dancing, singing together, having tea. Like, I just, I, lo I just love girl time, girl. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, like, that's why I got so excited. When I'm seeing y'all, y'all were doing some little thing where y'all did, like, a high five. I was like, that's so cute. <laughs> oh, me and Rebecca. Yeah, the, the five-year-old inside of me is like, oh, that's so cute. I want a high five. A lot of times I feel like I missed my era. Like, I could have lived in, like, the 60s. Like, minus the racism, right? But <laughs> minus, I mean, we still got it. But come on, that come on. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, as far as music is concerned, and fashion too. Yes. Um, I sometimes really feel like I miss my era. But yeah. um, I was gonna say Jesse and I. He was my first Aretha Franklin thing that I had going on. Jesse and I created a show about Smokey Robinson and Aretha Franklin and their relationship. And we were like touring the country, singing songs like a review show. He oh, wow. And I was Aretha. It was really cute. And then then I booked this thing and I and I had to give the job to Martina Sykes. <laughs> oh, we love Martina. What's up? Is Martina in the house too? I don't know. You are boo boo. I love that. Y'all gotta um y'all gotta do that again. Um what was it? I like? love all of my people's got some kind of vintage show. Chester has the uh Jackie Wilson. Jackie Wilson, um, what's her name? Has she does Lena Horn, um, Sydney, Cindy, 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 Cindy does Lena Horn, uh, Nikenji does, uh, uh, what she do? She she has a um, uh, what's her name? Carmen, not Carmen, but Dorothy Dandridge thing oh. that she's doing. Um, what's her name? Has done some Josephine Baker. Oh, we got the new question. You gonna read it? What was it like filming the Amazing Grace concert? You answer. Uh, so I watched the Amazing Grace concert on an airplane, which I think a lot of people have watched it on an airplane. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. The first time I saw it was on the airplane. The airplane. And when I tell you I was, I, there's one thing, one thing about me, I'm going to sleep on an airplane. I mean, the moment I get up there, I'm out. I just can't. I don't know what it is. I, I can't stay awake. I was perched, bright-eyed, and bushy-tailed that whole flight. Watched it twice, coming back. Because it is so crazy, first of all, that that footage has been around for so long and was never released. And never seen the light of day, right? Then to see, like, the energy of the people feeling so intimate coming to see her at, like... I feel like this was a very vulnerable concert for her. Scary mm -hmm. to now knowing, you know, the history of what, what else was going on in her life at that time. Um, and then James Cleveland and Clara mm -hmm. Ford and Mick Jagger. And mm -hmm. You can look and see, like, this was real. This was a thing. And that choir, that choir is so genuine with them costumes, them outfits they had on. I loved filming that. <laughs> Look just like it. Like the way we had, we got the Jesus painting in the back and they got on the, the Reynolds wrap. I haven't gotten to that section of y'all's show. I think I'm on episode five. Okay, well, seven is my favorite episode. Yeah, yeah. I haven't gotten to that, to y'all <laughs> section. Great, so and you our project hasn't come out yet, so I'm, so I'm going to make no comment on that question. But I have seen a little clip from y'all's Amazing Grace. Oh, you have? So you can talk from your own. <laughs> you know, Jennifer literally has the Holy Ghost in her throat. In her throat. 
you know, I, I used to sing background for her. She's really my first person I really sing background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when, I, even on, on stage as a color purple, when we would do things like, you know, sing the Prince tribute or whatever we would sometimes do after the shows, those are moments where I'm like, that's not my friend Jennifer. That's, that's like a whole Jennifer Hudson. Her voice is anointed. I watched people get the Holy Ghost off of, and I'm telling you. Yeah. And I, <laughs> at first, if it wasn't, if I wasn't there, I'd be like, how are y'all getting the Holy Ghost off of, and I'm telling you, she, she ain't singing about Jesus, but everything in her mouth, comes out of her mouth is anointed. Yeah. Feel it. And so all that to say, without saying anything about your, all, all the juice about y'all's, um, just get ready for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Upcoming August the Holy Ghost. Oh yeah. yeah. And um oh uh, yeah, Sister Duranese Pace, they were in our production for Amazing Grace. You'll see we got a lot of like little cameos. Uh mm -hmm. Jermaine Pre, T. I, Luke James. I saw T. I yeah, T. I I like T. I in that afro. Yeah. And you know who I saw who I noticed was on the um on the guitar was um Cameron, Cameron Jones. Do you know, did you, I don't know if you talked with the, some of the, the musicians. I talked to everybody, say kind. I mean, I don't, I don't talk to, but I mean, like, you know, like, you yeah. might talk to somebody, but they might only work one day, then you don't see them again. Yeah. You know? I, I don't remember the name, but I'm sure we probably did connect, because I really okay. know everybody. Yeah, he, he is a, um, his name's Cameron Jones, and he's a Grammy-nominated artist. I have to send you some of his music. He's good. Like, killer i was like Cameron, look at Cameron over there playing the, playing the guitar yeah somebody else said i thought that was him they yeah. have a lot of people like everybody really was they're really musicians yeah yeah they wanted to make that authentic you know zoom in look at you playing an e that ain't no e you know yeah uh, yeah we had the same thing happening yeah. which was so amazing like the the attention to detail you know yeah love a cameo that you guys have from jason <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, la, 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 I don't know, okay. I don't know, I don't know. But yeah, okay. yeah. Look, one of the things I said to her, I said, how are we going to do this? Because I can't say all my stuff because my thing ain't came out yet. How are we going to do it? It's, it's good promo to get the people ready. Get the ready. Yeah. For, yeah. for um, well, it's August, right? For respect. Yeah, August. August. All right. Um, let's see. You make me want to cut my hair. I cut love your. I start. Do you know I have locks now? They up under this ponytail, but no. Yes, I have locks. Nobody knows because I'm always wearing. Let me see if y'all can see. And I pull out one red lock. I did. Not They're very skinny though. You see, I have like sister locks. You, you know, we actually met. When I had locks, I believe, the first time we met, which was at you were doing once in this island with Saisha. At uh, what's that playhouse in New Jersey? Oh, that was a hard. That was an unhappy time in my life. I remember that time. Well, same. Yeah, we were doing. We were doing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> once on this island. Once on this <laughs> island. Yes. Um, I remember. Uh, wait, you had locks then? Yeah. By the time I cut my locks? right here, I had my locks for nine years. I had. I had. Um. Same thing, same size, sister locks. Like oh, you. the little skinny one, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did these myself, so they're not official. You know, they were not, I didn't go to a name brand sister lock technician, you know, awesome. going down a rabbit hole, but yeah. Okay, um, here we go. I'm going to, uh, okay. What did you both, wait, before we answer this, I want to answer, Patrice, would you ever go home to Virginia to do a concert? I will go home to Virginia to do a concert, but I want to bring all my friends. Like, I want to bring all those people I named earlier that went to governor school. Well, the hearts went up for that. They was like, heart, 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 heart. Do, I do want to. And I want to do it, you know, to benefit, like, the governor school and hurrah players and the, the places that um, invested in my career, in my life. Um, Joanne, we love you down <laughs> Uh, we love you. <laughs> okay, um, Nat King Corey. We can probably close out with this because remember when we said it was gonna be thirty minutes? Oh Lord, and look at this. It's an hour and twenty minutes later. Or or hour people and still here though, so we thank you. I know, yeah. All right. What did you both learn about the Franklin sisters relationship? Wait, is this the last one? If this I, if this is a good one for a last one? Um well, 
I thought it was. Let me just <laughs> see what else we can do. Like, because he got a lot of questions. Are there any other body else who got to ask, didn't get to ask, ask one? Well, some of them we actually already touched on. Like, oh, okay. Okay. During a pandemic. Um, actually, okay, no. Well, I can take, <laughs> I, I see one that we can actually end with. Um, all right. There's a lot of them in here. Okay. But yeah, let's do this one and then. I see another one we can end. Hey, Rima, what up, boo? Rima, well, her singing, she got one of them throats, too. The throat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that throat. Rima be like, ha, ha, ha. I'll be like, she can open it up. Woo. All right, so um, what did you both learn about the Franklin sisters' relationships? Um, for me, what I'm actually inspired to do more of what Say Khan and I are doing right now. It's about um, like what I got. Well, I have many, many layers to this. What I got from it initially is that people ain't the only ones. I have family members who are sisters who don't get along. Mm -hmm. um, but they love each other and they support each other. Um, they show up for each other. Being a background singer is so much more than than um, just singing oohs and ahs. It's so much more than that, you know? We If they turn around and give us a look like, girl, I can't hit the note, you hit it tonight. You gotta be ready. That's like a support. Yeah, it's support and it's trust, no matter what is going on, right? So I think it was very specific that she had her sister's singing background. I think it was more than just sing some oohs and ahs. And they- Start, insert that with you Please. and ask about um, your the synergy that I see on screen with you and Cynthia, um, with Rebecca. Like, what was that like for you? I, I got to insert that question because I have to. Um, and shout out to Rebecca, uh, Rebecca Naomi Jones, such a lovely spirit. I've done. We did readings for Secret Life of Bees together before it actually became a musical. She was in the readings for that, and 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 just such a wonderful spirit. Was there a synergy? Like vocally, with y'all standing around the piano, I just enjoyed it so much. How, what was that like for you? It was super from, well, Rebecca and I are new friends and we can never get rid of each other. Like we had so much fun together and we were together most of the time. It was, it's rare, like until the end that we're not together, right? Yeah. Um, so we had a good time. Where did you get that? You had her on a bike on your Instagram. Was that from the movie? She was on a bike, on an elliptical with an outfit on. Yes, yes. We shot in this house, and the holding room was in, like, their gym. <laughs> and we were all over the equipment. <laughs> she looked like a disco on an elliptical machine. Which, I was like, what? With Uggs on and a shield and a pink leotard. It I was done. It's fantastic. I love her. Her birthday was just so happy belated. Birthday, Rebecca, yes. Um, so, yeah. With you, yeah. Rebecca, Cynthia. And then uh, with Cynthia is super familiar, you know? I've been with Cynthia since the beginning of Color Purple. Star Rising, you know? So mm. even though in the even in the Color Purple, though we didn't sing a lot together until it was me until I was Nettie. Mm -hmm. I think it's just the chemistry, you know, like I know her voice, she knows mine. Um Kind of like what happens as a background singer, you know, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. know what the person is going to do. You know, you know, they can trust you, all that stuff. So, yeah, really familiar and just fun. And y'all look so beautiful. I, I said I need to say I've told her this before, but I'm going to say it again just for the for the audience, for y'all listening. I just thought y'all look so beautiful in those costumes. Thanks. Like I, you know, I live for vintage. I love seeing black people with just bouffants and like I love like my name used to be on Instagram used to be vintage pop soul like I love when I do concerts I'm like vintage pop soul <laughs> I, love, I love seeing y'all in those costumes like y'all really y'all really had a wonderful synergy that comes across in the show thanks friend yeah I love them costumes too girl I tried to take some and they let you take a little costume might have a few take a sweater or two <laughs> two man a little a little sweater, a little dress. Or... Me. 
profiling on Instagram eventually with a look. I be like, look, y'all done tape yeah. this <laughs> so it ain't gonna fit nobody else but me. Okay. Know? Okay. A lot of the venture stuff was rented. So couldn't yeah. do that. But you know, and some some things our costume designer Jennifer Bryant like love uh, her and she just made sure i was comfortable and everything but then she like started to make things you know kind of look vintagey because you know they ain't had no stretch back then so we had to create some things so they can we want we want a stretch <laughs> okay we need a, we want a stretch that tail needs a little and caboose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um oh somebody said hey squeak oh hey wife number one hey <laughs> we can love y'all thank you <laughs> Wife number, I was wife number one in Eclipse. Oh, um, okay. in Eclipse. I love that. I, it was heart wrenching, but I really loved that. That was one. Of the, yeah, that was definitely a heart wrenching role. Yeah. And shout out to my LIB people. I think I saw uh, LIB, LIB. I am J Biz. Yes, J Biz in the house. My Liberian people in the house. Yeah, your people. Okay, lyric. What's the <laughs> look at her um, trying to tell me she's ready for dinner? What? in there <laughs> anyway i was gonna let y'all see her because she now she moved and she knew i was getting you know i get excited i'm getting a dog soon yo. you so, i can't wait you know you I, know i need a dog i remember there was this one saturday i did a tribute to all my friends dogs i was like <laughs> i ain't got no i was like shout out to all my friends dogs. <laughs> I, was, I was sitting there for 15 minutes i was like lyric you did lyric. a couple times hey. huh I sure did. I sure did. This is what um, I in with right here, but I kind of just touched on it a little bit already. And shout out to Mona Lisa. Always so supportive. And I know Mona Lisa loves the vintage vibes as well. Hard. So what was the most interesting thing you learned or took away from doing both of your roles? You want to go first? No, no, you go. I got to think. Um, It's not necessarily about Irma. It's about my experience because this is my first time on TV, right? When and you're so good to be, you tell me you're the first time. You blew my mind. You like I ain't even had a test. Blew my mind. Blew nope. my mind. And I have never had. I've never been on TV as an actor. Not an extra background, under five co-star, nothing. So I was actually very. Um, I was really nervous because I was like, am I actually going to know what I'm doing? They didn't even test me. What if, what if they made a mistake? Mm. Mm. Um, and what I took away from this experience in general, like, I'm so grateful that I had Courtney B. Vance, who plays our daddy, who plays C.L. Franklin. Mm. He and Malcolm Barrett, who plays Ted, and then also... Okay. Kimberly Hebert, who plays Ruth Bowen. Kimberly, and, yeah, yeah. And, and I got to shout out Antonique as well. Antonique Smith tearing it down as, as um, the mother. Yeah, she's amazing. Antonique and Chester, we all live right here together. Like, I could throw a rock and hit all of their houses. It's mm. a all the time. We're waiting for you, so come on. <laughs> um, but, um, and also Mama P, Pauletta Washington plays our grandmother girl pauletta i know right so i am so grateful that i had them to guide me the way they did say con you know i didn't even know how to read like the dude the day out of days i didn't know like yeah. what all the ad and the first and the second and the xyz i'm like I don't, know, and all that. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know how to read the call sheet it's not like the call sheet that we use for broadway i didn't yeah. know anything and they made me so comfortable and built me up every single day. They taught me how to do everything. Mm. Oh, I can't even believe that I didn't say his name, Anthony Hemingway, or mm. who literally just, he's like an actual genius, like an actual genius and a miracle worker and also a magician. Mm. Um but you know, like I just felt so taken care of it to what took a lot of the pressure off, not only having them, but just knowing that there's somebody designated to do every single thing and all I have to do is act. Is act. Yep. I mean like the smallest little things, somebody does that. Yep. And you best not no. do it lest you be taking away their job. No. Mm -hmm. 
that made everything so much easier for me, Saikon. And what I always say is because of that and because I wanted to be dropped in and natural, my whole thing was, it ain't that serious. Hmm. If that makes sense, you know what I mean? Like, it just it ain't that serious. Just come show up and act. Do do um do what you do. You're here for a reason, obviously. <laughs> Didn't get tested. <laughs> right, absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, so that's what I took away from the experience in general. I will say, um, <clears throat> and that's beautiful what you took away because to have to be on your first movie, your first time on a, on screen, and having that type of team, supportive people around you, um, you know, you could have had a very different experience. You know, when you go into uh, shows like if you go into a long running show and you're like a guest star or you're popping in to do a co-star or under five whatever you know a lot of times there's so much going on um the last thing someone wants to do is help you you know but for you all to all be starting at the same time as a group and then you be on your first um first on camera that's just wonderful i love i love hearing stories like that that's what makes me always strive to be an encouraging person when people come on a set I'm always very welcoming. I'm saying hello. I'm greeting people and and just bringing that type of energy because I know what it feels like to be the first one. I mean, to be on my first time somewhere, even if I've done it before, but just to be your first time there and not feeling welcome, not feeling helped. Yeah. You know, like what you talked about earlier, being the plug, you know, so they plugged you. Yeah. They plugged you into the situation. They did. Um, the most interesting thing I learned or took away for me, for with um, doing the respect project, I would say was um, something that I think I'm getting prepared for now. Um, having a chance to watch uh, my, watch my leading lady Jennifer Hudson, watch her manage everything that she was managing at the same time. Um, again, it's interesting that both of our comments is not really about the actual story, but it's yeah. about the making of movies. Yes. Hey, Maisha, I talked about you earlier. About you. <laughs> um, shout out to Maisha McQueen. That's who I was talking about earlier from Tri Cities. Um, the making of movies, right? Watching her, um, and I had this experience also on Eclipse, which was a play, but it starred Lupita Nyong'o. Shout out to her. Um, was watching when you watch. Um, someone having like when you are number one on the call sheet there's a level of responsibility that people do not understand they cannot imagine and so your life changes you don't you cannot answer every phone call you can't uh you can't be at the club every night we can't be at no club no way well people be at the club but <laughs> this, this corona life people not supposed to be in no club whatever, but, huh say it again atlanta be in the club be in the club. I was like, oh. <laughs> but, um, just the idea of just the idea of responsibility and focus um, that it takes. Uh, thank you, Mona Lisa. Thank you. Um, the idea of focus and commitment and just how to manage it all. I remember there was one day um, there was something happened, and it was like a. Cause this was pre-COVID. We did our, we shot our movie pre-COVID. There was a, a a big party or something that was about to happen, and I was like, um, I was like, uh, I said, Jennifer, you go. Oh, see you at the party. She was like, No, I gotta catch a flight. I promise y'all, the next day, she was singing at Kobe Bryant's funeral. <laughs> Let me tell you about that, Jennifer Hudson. I, <laughs> I was like, Jennifer, ain't, no, she's not at the party. No. But this is the thing when you don't know what people are doing, you can't be like, She not coming to the party. Yeah, she but but things to do. You know, people have things to do. Go ahead. But there's also like another element of leadership, meaning the lead of the show is not just I'm the star of the show, but yeah. leading people and guiding people, being a voice for people. Yes. Um, and Jennifer, I know that Rima and whoever else is up here, if Carla's still here, whoever was in the color purple, I have never seen work ethic like that in my life. She never missed a show. Because mm. I couldn't mm. call out. Jennifer never <laughs> missed a show. Never. <laughs> I'm calling out. I'm calling out. 
<laughs> but um yeah like she her work ethic is unmatched i saw it in the color purple and then i saw it singing oohs and ahs with her you know mm-hmm. her work mm-hmm. ethic is fantastic and she's a leader and she will make everyone feel like they are with her like or she's with them rather like she has that whole thing where she's like you know well, Jay Hub Productions, we take care of our own. J. Hub Productions, yeah. But she really means that. I think they really do mean that. I've been made to feel that way. I'm so glad you got that same experience with her and her team. Like, mm. it makes a huge difference when a leader is excellent. Yes, absolutely. And bringing that energy, just bringing yeah. that energy to the set, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, Eat out chocolates all the time. Say it again. Yeah, get, look, giving out stuff. We, I got J. Hub sweatshirt. I got oh, yeah. J. Hub purses. Yes. I got, I got my, I got my merch. She loves it. She's really that way. I'm so yeah, good. Yeah. yeah. That was the biggest thing I would say I learned. And I, and I, I've seen it before and I enjoy seeing it whenever I have a chance to be around um, or witness someone's star rising or just someone managing stardom mm-hmm. uh, because stardom is something else. Like people just have no idea. I mean, it is something else, you know, the, how much look, even just being a singer. Right. And I know we said we was going to get off of here. But let me say this, <laughs> just being a singer, when you're not famous, when you are at a, you at a pizza party, I don't know, you, everybody, oh, we have a pizza at the thing. And then there's people at the party, y'all don't know each other, you know somebody, and they're like, well, what do you do? I say, oh, sing something. People are constantly demanding that you work. I'm for saying. If you walk into a dentist and, you, and they're like, oh, I'm a dentist, you're going to be like, fix my tooth. Oh, fix my tooth. Yes. <laughs> You know, so there's like a level of expectation mm-hmm. that is like, it's 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 probably um, a lot more than people have for other people in other that do other types of work, and so then to balance that, be focusing on numerous projects, which you know we are all constantly. You might see us in like right now, right now we're talking about the Aretha Franklin story, God rest her soul. We're talking about respect. We're talking about genies. We're talking about this project. But we both know we have numerous, there's still auditions going on. There's still other music you have to learn. You're still multitasking. There's so much that you have to do while then still managing whatever questions are coming in or, you know, whatever. And it and it just takes a special type of person to be able to manage all of that and yeah. do all of that. And, you know what I mean? and still be the light and be nice to people. Yes, absolutely. 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 Hey, I love you. I'm so glad. I love you too. Let, um, all my followers, please go follow my friend Saycon because she's doing amazing things. And, um, you know, this was a whole thing just to share the light. We both got the light and we, and we sharing this thing. That's what it was all about. Ain't no competition between no projects or each other here. Okay. Absolutely not. Absolutely hey. not. I had to take a screenshot just now. You and did. I want followers too. Uh, whoever my followers are on here, please make sure you follow Patrice as well. We knew we wanted to do this, and we're going to do it again um, when my project comes out, uh, when the Respect movie comes out. So we said we're going to do it for yours, we're going to do yeah. it for mine. So just because um, something that Patrice called, we were talking earlier today. She called me back. She said, I'm calling you back to tell you this, girl. People are so excited to see two women getting along, talking about the business and enjoying the work that we do. And we want you all to know that you have to do that in order to be happy, enjoy your career. You can't live your career tight, afraid to connect with other women or other men or be in competition with people. You will always be your own your own self and, and whatever's for you is for you. So that's why we have to lift each other up. That's how we are able to get more black movies, more movies with people like us. So we can't be like, oh, I'm not going to watch this or I'm not going to watch that. We got to watch all of it. Yes. You understand? That's how it's a numbers game. So we have to support each other. Oh. Have to happen, you know? Please. Angela, we love you. <laughs> all right, boo. Love you down. Love you down. Have a good night. Don't save it if you can. Yeah, if you can. Okay. I don't know. Sometime it, sometime it be like, because eh, we've been on here a long time, but we'll see. I'm going to try to just chill on it. And let it tell me what it's going to do. I'm going to exit. I'm not going to push no more buttons. Okay. (laughs) Bye, boo. Love you. Good night. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody.